I guess what I'm saying is the Bible is literally the world's oldest game of telephone. Many of us grew up playing the telephone game with friends or at birthday parties. Basically one person sitting in a circle whispers a message to the player on his right, who then turns to the next person and repeats the message. That person turns and restates the message, finally the last player announces the message to the entire group. Errors typically accumulate in the retellings, so the statement announced by the last player differs significantly, and often amusingly, from the one uttered by the first. However, this analogy is often applied to the transmission of the New Testament. If the copying process was this unstable and error-filled, then we should be skeptical of the biblical text. We should remember that the goal of the telephone game is to see how badly the story can get misrepresented, while the goal of New Testament copying was by and large to produce very careful, accurate copies of the original. So, this is not a good analogy of how the text of the New Testament has come down to us. Here are just a few other reasons why. First, the telephone game is linear. Person A to B. B to C. C to D and so forth. Whereas the copying process was not one to one, like individual links in a chain. When it comes to the text of the New Testament, there are multiple lines of transmission, and the original documents were very probably copied several times, and as we will see below, we have access to earlier copies to compare with later copies. This is more like branches spreading out and descending from a tree. Next, the telephone game is verbal, while the text was written, and so the words and phrases can be examined along the way. In the telephone game, the person only has the last person in line to interrogate. With scripture text, earlier texts are often available to inspect. One other point to bring up is that even the ancient scribes had access to earlier texts, and would often check their work against a manuscript that was many generations older than their immediate ancestor. The average papyrus manuscript would last for a century or more. Thus, even a late 2nd century scribe could have potentially examined the original document he or she was copying. In addition to ancient manuscripts, we have over 1 million quotations from the New Testament by the early church fathers. Even if the entire New Testament was destroyed, it could be almost entirely reassembled just by using these quotes. Also, these quotes are from various points in history, meaning that changes in the Bible would also be reflected in these quotes. Further, in addition to the 5,700 Greek manuscripts, that we have in the million plus quotations, we also have thousands of ancient translations of the Bible in languages such as Latin and Coptic. There are more than 10,000 manuscripts in Latin alone. Although these are translations, there are also very helpful witnesses to the original text. Next there is a motivational difference between the New Testament scribes and kids playing the telephone game. Many kids myself included would intentionally try to garble the message in the telephone game. In contrast, the scribes were professionals who took great pride in their work. Copying these manuscripts by hand was painstaking work and they were motivated to do the best they could. They viewed these texts as sacred, not something to be careless with. Finally, life, death, and eternity usually do not hang in the balance at a birthday party. In other words, if Jesus really was, who he claimed to be and the offer of eternal life was legitimate, then there would have been a high degree of motivation among the copiers to get this message right.